Welcome to BrilliantMaths.com, where every student has an opportunity to excel in maths. Have you subscribed to BrilliantMaths.com yet? Do so, you'll be glad you did. There are lots and lots of resources for primary and secondary school students. You have an opportunity to improve your grades. Today's lesson is actually taken from Brilliant Maths Module 2. Get a copy and let's work together. Here, we want to look at indirect proportion. When do you have indirect proportion? It's in a situation where one quantity is increasing and the other is decreasing. Let's look at these examples. If eight people can pick the apples on a farm in six days, how long will it take 12 people? So, eight people, six days. So it takes eight people six days to pick up the apples on the farm. So, if you had only one person, how long will it take? Will it take more or less? Eight people would take, eight people takes six days. So one person, if you had only one person, it would definitely take more days. So it would take eight times six days. So one person will take eight times six days. So one person will take more. What if you have 12 people? 12 people will take less days than one person. So you divide eight times six by 12. So that will be 12 people will take 48 over 12 because eight times six is 48. So 48 over 12 days. So 12 people will take 48 divided by 12 days. And 48 divided by 12 is equal to 4. So 12 people will take 4 days. The next example says, some friends share the cost of a ride. If there are Three friends, it will cost $18 each. How much will it cost if there are five friends? So the total cost of the ride will be $18 times the number of friends. And there are three. So $18 times three is the total cost. So total cost of ride is equal to $18 times three. Three times eight, is 24, carry two. Three times one is three. So it will cost $54. So the cost of the ride is actually $54. If there are five friends, how much will each friend pay then? So you see the number of friends are increasing, so the cost is going to reduce. That is an example of indirect proportion. The number of friends increase, and then the cost that each friend pays decreases. So if there are five friends, each friend will pay 54. That same total cost will now be divided by five. So five into five, into five is one. Or rather, five into 54 is 10. Remember, 40 pence. 5 into 40 pence is 80. So each of the five friends will have to pay $10.80. Hello, I'm Ngazi Arevogene introducing to you the Brilliant Maths Revision Workbooks and Models. At Brilliant Maths, we have Mathematics Revision Workbooks for primary school students from year one to six, and 10 modules that cover the secondary school mathematics syllabus. Each primary revision workbook 
has a minimum of 40 lessons. Each lesson has examples, exercises, and answers to help you check your work. The workbooks cover the major mathematics topics. E-copies and hard copies of the revision workbooks and modules are available on Amazon and BrilliantMaths.com. With Brilliant Maths, you are sure to excel in maths. Order for your copies now. In this example, we want to learn how to calculate rates. We calculate different kinds of rates. You can calculate the rate at which water is flowing through a tap or through a hose. But for example, one, we're calculating the rate of fuel consumption. It says a bus consumes 110 liters of fuel when it covers a distance of 149.6 kilometers. So when the bus travels 149.6 kilometers, it would have used up 110 liters of fuel. Then the question is, find the rate of fuel consumption in kilometers per liter. Km slash L is kilometers per liter. All right, so what do we do? We write down the information that we have already. 110 liters travels 149.6 kilometers. So, assuming you have only one liter, what distance would the bus cover? So, you divide 149.6 by 110. So, 149.6 kilometers divided by 110 liters. And that gives us 1.36. Check that out with your calculator. Yes, you get 1.36 kilometers. That means that with one liter of fuel, the bus will cover 1.36 kilometers. So the rate of fuel consumption is actually 1.36 kilometers per liter. In the second example, it says express 50 grams per minute in kilograms per hour. So first and foremost, you look at the units in which the first one has been expressed. It is grams per minute. And we want to change it to kilograms per hour. So that means that in one minute, you have 50 grams. So what if it's one hour? One hour is equal to 60 minutes. So that implies that in 60 minutes, you would have 60 times 50 grams, and that will be 3,000 grams. And we know that 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. So 3,000 grams will be equal to 3 kilograms. So expressing 50 grams per minute in kilograms per hour will give us three kilograms per hour because an hour is 60 minutes. For more examples and practice, get a copy of Brilliant Maths Module 2. There are lots and lots of examples and exercises in there for you. solve problems that involve distance, speed, and time. There is a distance, speed, time triangle, which makes it very easy. So on top of the triangle, we have a D and then S and T. Look at how it works. If you want to find distance, distance is speed times time. If you want to find speed, speed is distance over time. So you are dividing the distance by the time to get the speed. 
And if you want to find time, time is distance divided by speed. So if the question involves finding speed, you use the formula for speed. Simply divide the distance by time. If the question involves finding distance, you multiply the speed by the time you have been given. And if you are to find time, you divide the distance by the speed. It's as simple as that. So example, find the average speed of a car that travels 40 kilometers in two hours, 30 minutes. Time should be in hours. So convert two hours, 30 minutes to hours. That becomes two and a half or 2.5 hours. And then the formula for speed, speed is distance over time. The car traveled a total of 40 kilometers. So that's the distance. Speed is distance over time. Make it a habit to always write your formula so it will stay with you. You will never forget. So the distance, the total distance is 40 kilometers over the time taken is 2.5 hours. So the speed, if you divide that, 40 divided by 2.5 will give us 16. So the speed of the car is equal to 16 kilometers per hour. So that means that the car travels 16 kilometers every hour. So let's see, let's try to check that. If it travels 16 kilometers the first hour, plus another 16 kilometers the second hour, 16 plus 16 is 32. So in two hours, it travels 32 kilometers, plus, remember this is a check? In two hours, it travels 32 kilometers. And then in half an hour, which is 30 minutes, it will travel eight kilometers. So in two and a half hours, it actually travels 40 kilometers. So our speed is correct. The speed of the car is 16 kilometer per hour. For more of this, get a copy of Brilliant Maths Model 2. <music>